Sabbath 34, Torah portion Beha Alotecha, which means in your ascent in Hebrew, from the priestly order, division 20, Yeskel, 1 Chronicles chapter 24, verse 16. From the Torah, we have Numbers chapter 8, verse 1, through chapter 12, verse 16. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and say to him, When you mount the lamps, the seven lamps will give light in the front of the lampstand. Aaron therefore did so. He mounted its lamps at the front of the lampstand, just as Yahweh had commanded Moses. Now this was the workmanship of the lampstand, hammered work of gold. From its base to its flowers it was hammered work, according to the pattern which Yahweh had shown Moses, so he made the lampstand. Again Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Take the Levites from among the sons of Israel and cleanse them. Thus you shall do to them, for their cleansing, sprinkle purifying water on them, and let them use a razor over their whole body and wash their clothes, and they will be clean. Then let them take a bull from the herd with its grain offering, fine flour mixed with oil, and a second bull from the herd you shall take for a sin offering. So you shall bring the Levites near before the tent of meeting. You shall also assemble the whole congregation of the sons of Israel, and bring the Levites near before Yahweh, and the sons of Israel shall lay their hands on the Levites. Aaron then shall present the Levites before Yahweh as a wave offering from the sons of Israel, that they may be qualified to perform the service of Yahweh. Now the Levites shall lay their hands on the heads of the bulls, then offer the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering to Yahweh, to make atonement for the Levites. And you shall have the Levites stand before Aaron and before his sons so as to present them as a wave offering to Yahweh. Thus you shall separate the Levites from among the sons of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. Then after that, the Levites may go in to serve the tent of meeting. But you shall cleanse them and present them as a wave offering, for they are wholly given to me from among the sons of Israel. I have taken them for myself instead of every first issue of the womb, the firstborn of all the sons of Israel. For every firstborn among the sons of Israel is mine, among the men and among the animals. On the day that I struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them for myself. But I have taken the Levites instead of every firstborn among the sons of Israel. And I have given the Levites as a gift to Aaron and to his sons from among the sons of Israel, to perform the service of the sons of Israel at the tent of meeting and to make atonement on behalf of the sons of Israel, so that there will be no plague among the sons of Israel by their coming near to the sanctuary. Thus did Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the sons of Israel to the Levites, according to all that Yahweh had commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so the sons of Israel did to them. The Levites, Two, purified themselves from sin and washed their clothes, and Aaron presented them as a wave offering before Yahweh. Aaron also made atonement for them to cleanse them. Then after that the Levites went in to perform their service in the tent of meeting before Aaron and before his sons, just as Yahweh had commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so they did to them. Now Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, This is what applies to the Levites. From twenty-five years old and upward, they shall enter to perform their duty in the service of the tent of meeting. But at the age of fifty years, they shall retire from their duty in the service and not serve any more. They may, however, minister to their brothers in the tent of meeting in order to keep up their responsibility, but they themselves shall perform no service. Thus you shall deal with the Levites concerning their responsibilities. Thus Yahweh spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the first month of the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Now, let the sons of Israel observe the Passover at its appointed time. On the fourteenth day of this month, at twilight, you shall observe it at its appointed time, you shall observe it according to all its statutes and according to all its judgments. So Moses told the sons of Israel to celebrate the Passover. And they celebrated the Passover in the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at twilight, in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that Yahweh had commanded Moses, so the sons of Israel did. But there were some men who were unclean because of a dead person, so that they could not celebrate Passover on that day, so they came near before Moses and Aaron on that day. 
And those men said to him, We are unclean because of a dead person. But why are we restrained from bringing near the offering of Yahweh at its appointed time among the sons of Israel? Moses therefore said to them, Wait, and I will listen to what Yahweh will command concerning you. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, If any one of you or of your generations becomes unclean because of a dead person, or is on a distant journey, he may, however, celebrate the Passover to Yahweh. In the second month on the fourteenth day at twilight, they shall observe it, they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it until morning nor break a bone of it, according to all the statute of the Passover they shall celebrate it. But the man who is clean and is not on a journey, and yet neglects to celebrate the Passover, that person shall then be cut off from his people, for he did not bring near the offering of Yahweh at its appointed time. That man will bear his sin. If a sojourner sojourns among you and celebrates the Passover to Yahweh, according to the statute of the Passover and according to its judgment, so he shall do, you shall have one statute, both for the sojourner and for the native of the land. Now on the day that the tabernacle was erected, the cloud covered the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony, and in the evening it was like the appearance of fire over the tabernacle until morning. So it was continuously, the cloud would cover it by day, and the appearance of fire by night. Now whenever the cloud would go up from over the tent, afterward the sons of Israel would then set out, and in the place where the cloud settled down, there the sons of Israel would camp. At the command of Yahweh the sons of Israel would set out, and at the command of Yahweh they would camp, as long as the cloud settled over the tabernacle, they remained camped. Even when the cloud lingered over the tabernacle for many days, the sons of Israel would keep the charge of Yahweh and not set out. If sometimes the cloud remained a few days over the tabernacle, according to the command of Yahweh, they remained camped. Then according to the command of Yahweh, they set out. If sometimes the cloud remained from evening until morning, when the cloud was lifted in the morning, they would move out, or if it remained in the daytime and at night, whenever the cloud was lifted, they would set out. Whether it was two days or a month or a year that the cloud lingered over the tabernacle, dwelling above it, the sons of Israel remained camped and did not set out, but when it was lifted, they did set out. At the command of Yahweh they camped, and at the command of Yahweh they set out, they kept the charge of Yahweh, according to the command of Yahweh by the hand of Moses. Yahweh spoke further to Moses, saying, Make yourself two trumpets of silver, of hammered work you shall make them, and you shall use them for summoning the congregation and for having the camps set out. So both will be blown, and all the congregation shall gather themselves to you at the doorway of the tent of meeting. Yet if only one is blown, then the leaders, the heads of the divisions of Israel, shall assemble before you. But when you blow an alarm, the camps that are pitched on the east side shall set out. Then you will blow an alarm the second time, and the camps that are pitched on the south side shall set out, an alarm is to be blown for them to set out. When convening the assembly, however, you shall blow without sounding an alarm. The priestly sons of Aaron, moreover, shall blow the trumpets, and this shall be for you a perpetual statute throughout your generations. Now when you go to war in your land against the adversary who attacks you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets, that you may be remembered before Yahweh your God and be saved from your enemies. Also in the day of your gladness and in your appointed feasts, and on the first days of your months, you shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, and they shall be as a remembrance of you before your God. I am Yahweh your God. Now it happened in the second year, in the second month, on the twentieth of the month, that the cloud was lifted from over the tabernacle of the testimony, and the sons of Israel set out on their journeys from the wilderness of Sinai. Then the cloud settled down in the wilderness of Paran. So they moved out for the first time according to the command of Yahweh by the hand of Moses. And the standard of the camp of the sons of Judah, according to their armies, set out first, with Nashon the son of Amminadab, over its army, and Nethanel the son of Zur, over the tribal army of the sons of Issachar, and Eliab the son of Helen, over the tribal army of the sons of Zebulun. Then the tabernacle was taken down, and the sons of Gershon and the sons of Merari, who were carrying the tabernacle, set out. Next the standard of the camp of Reuben, according to their armies, set out with Eliezer the son of Shadur, over its army, 
and Shalumiel the son of Zurashaddai over the tribal army of the sons of Simeon, and Eliasaph the son of Duel over the tribal army of the sons of Gad. Then the Kohathites set out, carrying the holy objects, and the tabernacle was set up before their arrival. Next the standard of the camp of the sons of Ephraim, according to their armies, set out, with Elishama the son of Amahud over its army, and Gamaliel the son of Pedazer over the tribal army of the sons of Manasseh, and Abidon the son of Gideoni over the tribal army of the sons of Benjamin. Then the standard of the camp of the sons of Dan, according to their armies, which formed the rear guard for all the camps, set out, with Ahizer the son of Amishaddai over its army, and Pagiel the son of Akron over the tribal army of the sons of Asher, and Ahira the son of Anan over the tribal army of the sons of Naphtali. This was the order of march of the sons of Israel by their armies as they set out. Then Moses said to Hobab the son of Ruel the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, We are setting out to the place of which Yahweh said, I will give it to you. Come with us, and we will do you good, for Yahweh has promised good concerning Israel. But he said to him, I will not come, but rather will go to my own land and kin. Then he said, Please do not leave us, inasmuch as you know where we should camp in the wilderness, and you will be as eyes for us. So it will be, if you go with us, that whatever good Yahweh does for us, we will do for you. Thus they set out from the Mount of Yahweh three days' journey, with the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh journeying in front of them for the three days, to spy out a resting place for them. Now the cloud of Yahweh was over them by day when they set out from the camp. Then it happened when the Ark set out that Moses said, Rise up, O Yahweh, and let your enemies be scattered, and let those who hate you flee before you. And when it came to rest, he said, Return, O Yahweh, to the myriad thousands of Israel. Now the people became like those who complain of calamity in the ears of Yahweh. And Yahweh heard it and his anger was kindled, and the fire of Yahweh burned among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. The people therefore cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to Yahweh, and the fire died out. So the name of that place was called Taborah because the fire of Yahweh burned among them. And the rabble who were among them had greedy desires, and also the sons of Israel wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we used to eat free in Egypt, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic, but now our appetite is dried up. There is nothing at all to look at except this manna. Now the manna was like coriander seed, and its appearance like that of delium. The people would go about and gather it and grind it between two millstones or beat it in the mortar and boil it in the pot and make cakes with it and its taste was as the taste of cakes baked with oil and when the dew fell on the camp at night the manna would fall with it now moses heard the people weeping throughout their families each man at the doorway of his tent and the anger of yahweh was kindled greatly and it was evil in the sight of moses so moses said to yahweh why have you allowed this evil toward your slave and why have I not found favor in your sight, that you have laid the burden of all this people on me? Was it I who conceived all this people? Was it I who gave birth to them, that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing baby, to the land which you swore to their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they weep before me, saying, Give us meat that we may eat. I alone am not able to carry all this people, because it is too heavy for me. So if you are going to deal thus with me, please kill me at once, if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my wretchedness. Yahweh therefore said to Moses, Gather for me seventy men from the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and their officers, and take them to the tent of meeting, and let them take their stand there with you. Then I will come down and speak with you there, and I will take of the Spirit who is upon you, and will put him upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you, so that you will not bear it all alone. And say to the people, Set yourselves apart as holy for tomorrow, and you shall eat meat, for you have wept in the ears of Yahweh, saying, Oh, that someone would give us meat to eat. For it was good for us in Egypt. Therefore Yahweh will give you meat, and you shall eat. You shall eat, not one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days, but a whole month, until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you, because you have rejected Yahweh who is among you and have wept before him, saying, Why did we ever go out from Egypt? 
But Moses said, The people, among whom I am, are six hundred thousand on foot, yet you have said, I will give them meat, so that they may eat for a whole month. Should flocks and herds be slaughtered for them, to be sufficient for them? Or should all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them, to be sufficient for them? And Yahweh said to Moses, Is Yahweh's power limited? Now you shall see whether my word will happen for you or not. So Moses went out and told the people the words of Yahweh. Also, he gathered seventy men of the elders of the people and had them stand around the tent. Then Yahweh came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and he took of the spirit who was upon him and placed him upon the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do it again. But two men had remained in the camp, the name of one was Eldad and the name of the other Medad. And the spirit rested upon them, now they were among those who had been registered, but had not gone out to the tent, and they prophesied in the camp. So a young man ran and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Then Joshua the son of Nun, the attendant of Moses from his youth, said, Moses, my Lord, restrain them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of Yahweh were prophets, that Yahweh would put his spirit upon them. Then Moses returned to the camp, both he and the elders of Israel. Now there went forth a wind from Yahweh, and it brought quail from the sea, and let them fall beside the camp, about a day's journey on this side, and a day's journey on the other side, all around the camp, and about two cubits over the surface of the ground. And the people spent all day, and all night, and all the next day, and gathered the quail, he who gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. While the meat was still between their teeth, before it was chewed, the anger of Yahweh was kindled against the people, and Yahweh struck the people with a very severe plague. So the name of that place was called Kibroth Hadavava, because there they buried the people who had been greedy. From Kibroth Hadavava the people set out for Hazroth, and they remained at Hazroth. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had taken as a wife, for he had taken a Cushite woman, and they said, Has Yahweh indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us as well? And Yahweh heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than any man who was on the face of the earth. Suddenly Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron and to Miriam, You three come out to the tent of meeting. So the three of them came out. Then Yahweh came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the doorway of the tent, and he called Aaron and Miriam. And then both came forward, and he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, shall make myself known to him in a vision. I shall speak with him in a dream. Not so, with my servant Moses, he is faithful in all my household. With him I speak mouth to mouth. Indeed clearly, and not in riddles, and he beholds the form of Yahweh. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant, against Moses? So the anger of Yahweh burned against them, and he went away. But the cloud withdrew from over the tent, and behold, Miriam was leprous, as white as snow. And Aaron turned toward Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Then Aaron said to Moses, O oh, my Lord, I beg you, do not place this sin on us, in which we have acted foolishly, and in which we have sinned. Oh, do not let her be like one dead, whose flesh is half eaten away when he comes from his mother's womb. And Moses cried out to Yahweh, saying, O oh God, heal her, I pray. But Yahweh said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, would she not bear her dishonor for seven days? Let her be shut up for seven days outside the camp, and afterward she may be received again. So Miriam was shut up outside the camp for seven days, and the people did not set out until Miriam was received again. Afterward, however, the people set out from Hazroth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. From the prophet portion, we have Prophet Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 1, through chapter 4, verse 7. Then he showed me Yahushua, the high priest, standing before the angel of Yahweh, and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. And Yahweh said to Satan, Yahweh rebuke you, Satan. 
Indeed, Yahweh who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand delivered from the fire? Now Yehoshua was clothed with filthy garments and standing before the angel. And he answered and spoke to those who were standing before him, saying, Remove the filthy garments from him. Again he said to him, See, I have made your iniquity pass away from you, and will clothe you with festal robes. Then I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments, while the angel of Yahweh was standing by. And the angel of Yahweh testified to Yehoshua, saying, Thus says Yahweh of hosts, If you will walk in my ways and if you will keep the responsibility given by me, then you will also render justice in my house and also keep my courts, and I will grant you access to walk among these who are standing here. Now listen, Yehoshua the high priest, you and your friends who are sitting in front of you, indeed, they are men who are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am going to bring in my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have put before Yehoshua, on one stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave an inscription on it, declares Yahweh of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, declares Yahweh of hosts, Every one of you will call for his neighbor to sit under his vine and under his fig tree. Then the angel who was speaking with me returned and roused me, as a man who is roused from his sleep. And he said to me, What do you see? And I said, I see and behold a lampstand all of gold with its bowl on the top of it, and its seven lamps on it with seven spouts belonging to each of the lamps which are on the top of it also two olive trees by it, one on the right side of the bowl and the other on its left side. Then I answered and said to the angel who was speaking with me, saying, What are these, my lord? So the angel who was speaking with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my lord. Then he answered and spoke to me, saying, This is the word of Yahweh to Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says Yahweh of hosts. What are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you will become a plain, and he will bring forth the top stone with shouts of grace, grace to it. From the renewed blood covenant of our eternal high priest, Yehoshua, in the order of Melchizedek, we have Hebrews chapter 6. So let us stop going over the basic elementary teachings about Messiah again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in Elohim. You don't need further instruction about immersions, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and everlasting judgment. And this we shall do, if Elohim permits. For it is impossible to bring back to repentance those who were once enlightened, those who have experienced the good things of heaven, and have become partakers of the set-apart spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of Elohim, and the power of the age to come, and who then turn away from Elohim. It is impossible to bring such people back to repentance by rejecting the Son of Elohim, they themselves are nailing him to the cross once again and holding him up to public shame. When the ground soaks up the falling rain and bears a good crop for the farmer, it has Yah's blessing. But if a field bears thorns and thistles, it is useless. The farmer will soon condemn that field and burn it. Dear friends, even though we are talking this way, we really don't believe it applies to you. We are confident that you are meant for better things that come with salvation. For Elohim is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other set-apart ones as you still do. Our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts in order to make certain that what you hope for will come true. Then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. 
Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit Yah's promises because of their faith and endurance. For example, there was Yahweh's promise to Abraham. Since there was no one greater to swear by, Elohim took an oath in his own name, saying, I will certainly bless you, and I will multiply your descendants beyond number. Then Abraham waited patiently, and he received what Elohim had promised. Now when people take an oath, they call on someone greater than themselves to hold them to it, and without any question that oath is binding. Elohim also bound himself with an oath, so that those who received the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So Elohim has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for Elohim to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the veil into Elohim's inner sanctuary, where Yeshua has entered as a forerunner for us, having become our eternal high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Amen and Amen.